Temperature is the main parameter used by geologists to classify rocks. Rock texture is represented by size, shape, and sorting of the grains. So it can be described in terms of grain size as fine or large. In terms of sorting, it can be described as well sorted or poorly sorted, where well sorted indicates homogeneity and similarity in grain size while poorly sorted inside grains with different sizes and shapes as we can see here. In addition to that, texture can be described as rounded and angular grains. Rounded grain texture reflects the smoothness of the grains and absence of sharp edges or as angular where the shapes of the grains are characterized by sharp edges and curvature. Carbonate rocks have been classified based on the texture matrix to grain ratio. As per two well-known and standard classifications have ever been used since long time, they are Falk 1959 and Dunham 1962. Falk details the relative proportions of the allochemes in the rock and the type of the matrix. It gives a certain texture name based on the type of the matrix where grains are embedded where grains are embedded whether in micrite or autogenic minerals such as sparry calcite. For example, if we have a sample with fossils or bioclasters are floating in them in a matrix of micrite, then the texture will be defined as biomicrite. And if the sample has a matrix of autogenic minerals such as sparry calcite, then the texture is defined as biosporite. On the other hand, Dunham 1962 classification is based on the ratio of grains to matrix, regardless of the type of the matrix. It simply goes this way, starting from mudstone, where grains or the fossils occupy less than 10% of the sample area and 90% of the sample is matrix or micrite. So as grains number changes from mud supported to from mud supported like mudstone and waxstone rocks to grain supported backstone and grainstone the grains uh, becomes uh, more dominant and outweigh the ratio of micrite for bound stone bound stone texture is different as it refers to the original components of the rock of used or bound together such as coral and algae for crystalline texture it's usually referred to carbonate rocks where their original texture has been destroyed due some digenetic processes such as dolomatization, redolomatization, recrystallization, and etc. On the other hand, clastic rocks classification is based on grain size as well as components ratio. So whenever grain size decreases, lithology changes from sandstone to more fine materials such as silt, siltstone and claystone. However, particle size has an impact on reservoir quality. So whenever we move from the bottom of the triangle, from this area, to the top, we are moving from fine or more fine materials to more coarse materials, such as sandstone. So whenever we move from fine materials to coarse coarser materials, the higher potential for good reservoir quality. On the other hand, the name of the rock can be recognized based on its, on its components ratio. In general, sandstone rocks are composed of two common minerals, namely quartz, feldspar, with conditional incursion of lithic fragments. Quartz is the most common mineral in Earth's crust, composed of pure silica, SiO2, and characterized by hexagonal crystalline form. In addition to the absence of cleavage, it is involved in the composition of all forms of rocks, including igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary rocks. It is characterized by high resistance to weathering and digenetic processes, unlike feldspar minerals. Feldspar represent a group of aluminium and silica minerals such as potassium feldspar or orthoclase and plagioclase. Feldspar is the second common mineral in Earth's crust after quartz. These minerals are also present in different forms of rocks. 
unlike quarkin, Feldspar usually is susceptible to weathering conditions and dialysis processes. On the other hand, lithic is a terminology re referring to the worked pieces of other rocks transported and deposited to be part of sedimentary rock. This lithic fragment comprises any mix of minerals or particles or both combined. The name of the rock can be defined based on the ratio of these three components. So, for example, whenever percentage of feldspar within the rock increases against decrease in percentage of lithic fragment and quartz, then the rock will be defined as arcoid. And whenever the rock becomes cleaner with decrease in both feldspar and lithics, then it will be named quartz arenite. For reservoir quality and in general speaking, the quality of reservoir enhances whenever the formation rock composition becomes cleaner. This means that more quartz against less sparse or null feldspar and lithic, but there is always anomaly in nature. Why is that? Sometimes the dissolution of plagioclase feldspar could enhance interparticle por porosity. Lithic fragments might be composed of calcium carbonate grains, fossils that, when subject to solution processes, could leave bugs that enhances interparticle porosity or even intraparticle intra porosity or create intraparticle porosity. In sandstone, the size of grains provide insights about the dominant energy during the deposition in addition to the distance from sediment source. Large grains need high energy to be transported to depositional setting unlike fine sized grains which is usually transported as suspended load within low energy conditions. The most common examples for high energy environments, streams and waves. When large grains are present in the rock, they are good indicators. For first, for the sediment source, we mean here the type. So it can be either igneous or metamorphic, metamorphic and sometimes carbonate or reward sediment. Second, large grains good indicator for the distance of transportation. So the bigger the size of the grains, the closer of the sediment source to the depositional setting. In addition to that, the size of grains doesn't have a direct impact on porosity as other characteristics should be considered as such as sorting and grain shape. However, in well-packed unconsolidated sandstone, Porosity commonly decreases when large grains are dominant, unlike in the case of fine grain sandstone as porosity would increase. To make it clear, take for example two samples of unconsolidated sandstone like we see here with same certain surface area or same sample volume as grains in, are in cubic packing. One packed with large grains and the other with fine grains. Porosity in large grain samples represent 42% of the sample components ratio, whilst porosity in the fine grain sample represent around 88%. So fine grain samples have higher porosity compared to large grain sample of same surface area or same volume. Grain sorting is another texture parameter. It has a direct impact on sandstone rock primary porosity and permeability. Usually, in poorly sorted sandstone, porosity decreases, hence permeability, compared to well-sorted sandstone samples. The reason for porosity and permeability reduction in poorly sorted samples is due to variation in grain size. The finer grains reduce the dimension of the flow paths or narrowing the pore throats which negatively impact the fluid flow through the rock. In well sorted sandstone, primary porosity or interparticle porosity is preserved since the grains have similar size. So we can see that the impact of sorting on porosity and permeability depends on the grain size and their relative proportions. Grain shape is another important texture parameter that should be examined carefully under thin section. Rounded grains indicate transportation away from the source. 
whilst angular shaped grains indicate being deposited close to the source. How grain shape impact the porosity of the reservoir? In clean sandstone, rounded grain preserve intergranular porosity at certain level. On the other hand, in angular grain sandstone, angularity of the grains could have a positive impact on reservoir quality by increasing primary porosity, hence permeability. How is that? Angularity of the grains irregularly modifies the geometry of the intergranular pores. This would enable pores of different radius to connect and make a complex and intense network of pore throats. This will in turn enhance the permeability of the reservoir rock. Geoscience skills. Thank you for keeping learning.